Okay, we're under the hood of a uh, Yanko style Nova. Really neat, neat car here. Um, got a lot of neat appointments to it. Try to point them all out for you. Obviously, a lot of glitter. You know, it does have a lot of uh, chrome uh, accents on it. 14-inch uh, air cleaner on it, uh, stating 427 turbo jet on it. It has a chrome alternator, chrome bra bracketry on it, billet aluminum front end, aluminum water pump. Aluminum uh, intake manifold on it, Carter AFB carburetor, a set of billet aluminum valve pan covers. Oh my. <laughs> a polished um, aluminum air conditioning compressor. Chrome power steering pump, complete power steering pump. A complete serpentine drive system on the front of this vehicle. Instead of belts, it's got a serpentine system. Very expensive piece to add. Polished stainless or, man, I'm going to call it chrome uh, shroud for the seven blade flex fan that's on it. A chrome uh, radiator cap piece on it here. Huge, huge aluminum. It's at least a four pass high flow radiator that, that, uh, on this guy to help keep it cool. Dual stage master cylinder with stainless steel brake lines, proportioning valve. And you can see that that is absolutely brand spanking new, as is the. Uh, uh, power booster for it, the vacuum booster for it. Uh, new battery in it, uh, all new lines on the air conditioning system on this vehicle. Uh, chrome gooseneck. God, there's so much under this thing I can't, we're going to be here a while. <laughs> uh, new air conditioning uh, condenser in the front, you can see all the new lines. Uh, everything on this vehicle has been addressed. The lines are hidden where it goes into the uh, passenger compartment so that uh, uh, it's not hanging on the sides of the uh, fender well. They did them underneath the fender and then transitioned them in from that point. The fender wells themselves, instead of being gloss black or the under hood area gloss or flat black, they have it painted gloss black to match the outside of the car. Uh, really, really adds a high end look to the vehicle. Uh, this thing is uh, a big block Chevy. Uh, I know it's at least a 454. It states 427, but I believe this one is a 454. Uh, tons of power, tons of torque. Uh, it's an iron head motor. It does not have aluminum heads on it. Doesn't have a set of headers either. This thing has a set of uh, high flow cast iron manifolds like you'd see on an LS6. All new uh, power steering lines and uh, hardware for the power steering system. Uh, everything on this car is high end and uh, addressed. There's nothing here that hasn't been uh, uh, addressed in one way or the other. Uh, again, a fantastic engine compartment. Uh, there's absolutely no leaks whatsoever. On top of the motor anyway. We'll check it from underneath. But uh, top of this engine, the valve pan covers, the intake manifold, timing chain cover. Uh, there's nothing leaking. Absolutely nothing. Great engine compartment. Let's go run the rest of it now. Hi, you're at Hangsters at Daytona Beach, Florida. And our guest today is a Yanko style Nova. Really great looking car. Uh, we always get these cars and kind of Yankoize them, you know. They're just plain looking Novas until we do the striping and the badging and everything that goes with them to make it look like a real authentic uh, Yanko car. The only way you can tell is if you have the Yanko book and check the serial number. There's no other way that you can tell that this isn't a real Yanko if it's laying there on the street and someone's looking at it. Anyway, let's go over it and we'll check all the uh, paint and all the uh, fitment of the car. Okay, the gap, you can see the paint on this car is just absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Nice deep black finish. There's no marks or dents or deviations or anything whatsoever on it. Uh, the gap on the hood to the fender is nice level and it has about an eighth of an inch or so. Uh, pretty close anyway. Uh, same on this side. And the fitment clean up to the cowl area. Obviously it has a cowl induction hood. Uh, really a nice add to this vehicle. They really, really have a nice look with a cowl induction put on them. Trim around the front, you can see how it lines up just as nice as can be. This anodized aluminum trim with the Chevy emblem on the front. The trim itself has no deterioration whatsoever, no oxidation around it. These end pieces, usually the black is missing in them. It's, it's blown out through the years. Uh, this is not. This is just as nice as clean as you'd ever want to find. Uh, both sides of them. The grill, the aluminum grill, and there's no uh, stone chips or hits or anything else on them. There is a crack right here in this uh, plastic filler panel that goes between the bumper and the grill area. 
uh, just shrinkage through the years. There is a snap, there is a crack here, though, just from shrinkage. Uh, absolutely not from an accident. Chrome on the bumper. Well, you couldn't get asked for any nicer than that. No one's put their feet up on it through the years to scratch it or distress it in any way. Nice clear lenses in the front. Bumper fitment is spot on both sides. You couldn't ask for a better fitting bumper than that. That is right on the money. Um, it's nice linear fitment also. Other than that little crack in that piece of uh, plastic, that front end is absolutely spot on. You could not ask for a better fitting, nicer finish front end and certainly not nicer paint than we have on the front end of this car. Let's go down the side. Okay, driver's side. A little tiny, I don't know what that is. There's something there that looks like someone may have brushed, touched a little tiny nick right here. You can't see it, you're not going to see it in the video. You have to really look to see it, but it's there. Certainly nothing that you'd fix. 427 designation, because from Yanko these cars were uh, L72s, so um, that's what it would have been in real life, would be in a 4 quarter 4 427. Try to make it as authentic as you possibly can. The Yanko badge on it, no belt, just the way it should be. Um, hood to cowl, the fender, the door, look at this. Very, very nice fitment. Clean down to the rocker panel. The paint on this car is just absolutely beautiful. We just had all the uh, uh, paint on this vehicle wet sanded and buffed and a couple areas touched up so that it is absolutely pristine at this point. Nice legible VIN number. Correct wiper arms, incorrect blades. It looked like a set of newer black Anco blades. We're going to have to get Donnie to switch those to an Argent style metal, original equipment style blade that goes with it. It just doesn't fit the look of this car at all. We got a dashboard, padded dash on it. Um, no marks, no cracks, no warpage whatsoever. The metal piece in the front that transitions to the base of the windshield. As clean as you will ever find any car. It looks like the day that it was assembled at the GM plant. Tinted window in the front with the sunshade fade on it. Trim around the window itself. Absolutely no marks whatsoever. Absolutely none. Of course, the roof. We very. I don't think we've ever found any marks or chips or anything in a roof. Never once. And that's almost three years now, and we still haven't found one. Trim around the uh, wing area, just as nice as could be. It does have the correct GM style mirror on it. Tinted glass on the side, also. How about that? This particular Nova has all the bright work, the uh, stainless uh, uh, drip rail, which, by the way, has no marks whatsoever in it, and the anodized aluminum trim around the windows. A lot of them are just painted. This guy happens to have the optional trim around it. Uh, wipes, whiskers, just absolutely brand new and as tight a fit as you could ever hope to find, uh, where the rubber goes on to the uh, top of the door and the top of the quarter panel. Really nice. Chrome on the door handles. Door handles are absolutely brand new. Door to the quarter panel. Really nice fitment. Not hanging out at all. Sail panel. No marks whatsoever. You can't see where the uh, uh, quarter and the uh, roof have been attached way back when at the factory. Usually you'll see a little tiny bit of a dip in air shrinkage through the years. Someone's addressed this one so that there's no issues whatsoever. Absolutely none. Right. Tin everywhere. No uh, bondo, no filler, nice sharp edges on the uh, quarter bases and the uh, fender wells as you can see. Yanko, super shitty. Side marker light in the back, just like it was in the front. Uh, laser straight side. There are no dents. We didn't come across any chips other than that one tiny mark, and I'm not even going to call it a chip. I don't even know what that is. Uh, doors look like they line up just as though they should. Uh, really nice straight car down the side. Really nice. American Torque Thrust wheels, uh, 15 inch. This is just the way Don Yanko would have put this car out on the street whenever he built it. Uh, back in that era. That was his wheel of choice, was American Racing Torque Thrust with the uh, uh, gray centers on them and the uh, machined outer rim. 
a lot of originality, a lot of look for this thing, just the way it would have been if you bought it from Yanko back in 1970. Let's go out back so we can show you there. Okay, rear section of our Yanko style uh, Nova. And just like the hood, look at the fit of this uh, rear deck lid. Just as precise as you would ever hope to find one. Look at this. The alignment and the, uh, the gaps are just as sweet as you'd ever want to hope to find. Yanko designation on the back, just the way it would have been when Don built the car. The trim around the back light, the back window, has absolutely no marks whatsoever. Absolutely none. Half shelf is brand new. There's no uh, fade or no deterioration whatsoever on it. Where it transitions to the back of the uh, uh, seat, the rear seat. Uh, that piece of molding is just fit up against it, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Tail lights themselves. The uh, anodized aluminum is nice and fresh and clean. Lenses are absolutely brand new, still nice and shiny and crisp looking. Same as this side, there's no deterioration whatsoever. Bumper fitment. Again, just like the front one, it's right on the money. It cannot fit any better than it does there. Uh, let's see. Look at the alignment on that thing. The gap from the uh, tail lights down to the bumper. Precise fitment. It cannot fit any better than it does. There's no marks or chips or anything on the crow. Um, no one has made any attempt to put their feet up on the bumper through the years, so the chrome is just as it was when it was new. Absolutely nothing on the side of this car or uh, the back of it now. Let's go one more side to go. Okay, rear section. Again, the Anko SC on it, designation. Uh, loose side marker light. Fits nice, but just loose. We have to tighten that. And here it's tin. Nice sharp edges. No one's put any Bondo. No one's uh, rolled these up or done anything with it. Tin everywhere. This is a very clean car. The uh, trim around the back uh, window where it goes on to the hat rack. Usually these things are faded and distressed a little bit because some of it's plastic and, and the section goes through the center is uh, steel. This is as it was when it was new. Could not be any better than it is. Again, the uh, side of the roof there is just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Drip rail. No dinghies, no marks, no brooms fell against it through the years. Bright wear around the windows. And this does have tinted glass apparently all around. Side windows and the back light and the tinted front windshield. So you've got darker glass on the side of it. Gives it a nice dramatic look, a nice stealth look to it. Uh, wife's whiskers on this side, same as the other. Trim around the uh, wing area the same way. Person buys a car and if they want a right-hand mirror, we'll put a right-hand mirror on it for them. Kind of tough to drive without the right-hand mirror these days. Okay, trip. Man, this door here could go in just a hair. A little bit loose. This one has to be adjusted in just a little bit. A little bit hanging out here. Not an issue. We run across that quite a bit. The paint on this car is just amazing. Okay, door to the front end, just as nice as can be here. Nova, Yanko designation. Again, look at the fitment of this guy. Trim around the front window on this side. No marks on the uh, stainless at all. Absolutely nice. Four twenty-seven designation, and we're back where we started from. I love those wheels. They really give this thing a real original look to it. This is just the wheel. The whole setup is just the way Don would have sold this car uh, back in 1970. Uh, fantastic color combination. A great car. Uh, these cars were, the real ones were L72s. It would be a four and a quarter, 427s is what he did. Uh, the cars would come in usually with a small block in them and uh, take that motor out use it as a doorstop or something. I don't know what he did with them. And, uh, Put an L72 in it, uh, four and a quarter, 427 out of a 66 Corvette is what they uh, originated in. And um, this car's made some serious horsepower. They were rated at four and a quarter, 425 horsepower, 
way beyond that. They, that was a joke for a quarter horse. Now, these cars were making some serious horsepower in a 3,200 pound car. Do the math. Took a lot to get around this guy. Uh, they came with a good uh, uh, suspension in them. Uh, they came with a, uh, a four-speed. I don't remember seeing any automatics. I know he made some in later years, but the uh, majority of these were all four-speed Muncie's. And uh, these cars just literally cooked. This car, when it's sitting on the curb, no one will know that this is not a real Yanko. The badging is correct. The wheels are correct. The brakes are correct on it. You open the hood, and it looks like the correct motor that belongs in it. Uh, it gives every indication of being a real Yanko car, but it's not $185,000 to $200,000. You're going to buy this car for substantially less than that. Not even a fraction of that, actually. So um, take a look at it. It's here on our Hangster site. We'd love you to come down and see the car in person, but that's why Devin and I do these videos, because we know if you're in Maine or California or something and you just can't make it down, we're trying to present these cars to you as... Uh, um, well as we possibly can, you know, try to pick out every little defect that we see, uh, both mechanical and, uh, and physical. You know, we did find a little tiny mark, which we're not going to fix over there. Uh, you can't see it anyway. We got a loose light there. We have a uh, door that needs adjusted. Uh, but other than that, this car is an absolute diamond. Uh, great looking combination. Take a look at it. It's here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Well, we're in our tuxedo black and white. We got another tuxedo black and white Chevy here, just like the uh, Chevelle we just did. Um, Nova Yanko style car. Headliner in it, absolutely as drum tight as you'd ever want to find one. The sun visors do not have any stitching coming loose. They're just as nice and tight as you'd ever want to find. Trim around the windows and around the uh, roof area is just nice and sweet, just the way it would be. Uh, it was like mold, the molded uh, original headrests on the car too. Those are really expensive to find. Uh, no milkiness or anything on the uh, rear view mirror, and it is the original rear view mirror. Day night also. Uh, dashboard, uh, new dash pad, uh, nice and resilient yet. No cracks or warps or deviation on it. Absolutely no cracks on the steering wheel. I was just looking at this. It's unusual to find one, but there are absolutely no cracks in it. The Bar through the center with Chevrolet on the side of them, just as nice and resilient as it was when it was new. Dashboard itself, the gauge cluster is just clean and, and clear as can be. Uh, not much of an instrumentation. I mean, you got a fuel gauge and you have a speedometer. End of story. But there are a trio of gauges underneath the dash, auxiliary gauges. And you have a water temperature, oil pressure, and voltmeter. So you know exactly what's happening with this guy. Ah, uh, let's see. Pedals on it are uh, really nice. There's no wear whatsoever on them. Uh, the the uh, parking brake does function. Uh, disc brake designation in the center of your brake pad. Vents for the uh, air conditioning uh, that works quite well. The um, car is a radio delete car. There is no radio there. I wonder if you put one. Yep, there's a CD player in the glove box, just the way it should be. So radio delete, but it does have a CD player in the glove box. Uh, obviously, it's a bench seat car. Uh, it does have the original style uh, interior uh, material on the seat. It does have the basket weave section through the center, front and back, just the way it would be from uh, GM when it was new. Uh, no armrests in the back. It has new window cranks in the back with the uh, wood accentuate. Well, not wood. It's, it's, it's a white like streak that goes down the side to accent the car. So you got white stripes on the outside, you even got some white stripes on the interior portion, really accentuates it nice. White shift knob too. Um, again, the hat rack, the roof uh, sections, the, the tail section that goes off the uh, headliner onto the uh, base by the hat rack, none of that is distorted. Most of them are kind of funkied up in one way or the other. This one is not. Uh, loop pile carpeting, just the way it would be from GM. It does have seat belts in the front and it's got seat belts in the back too so we got a full complement of seat belts uh, the, the rubbers the, the seals everything on this vehicle are all brand new nice and resilient nice and soft um, armrests on the front of the doors are molded armrests they're not recovered ones they are the original style molded armrests that came with this car uh, when it was new see the white on the door that's really really a nice a accent to the car uh, again new uh, door actuators and new uh, uh, window cranks 
Alright, you gonna fight with me? Alright. Key to the whole operation, what really makes this guy a ton of fun, is this thing right here. Four speed transmission in this thing. You can lay this thing sideways anytime you want. It's a really, really neat car to drive. It's, uh, it's just a very well put together car. Uh, someone spent a lot of time and a lot of effort to make this car into a Yanko style absolute tribute car. Uh, this thing is as nice a one as you'll ever find. Uh, if you're in the market for a Nova, you better take a look at this one because this is not going to last very long, especially in this color combo. Seems like everything we have anymore that's black just kind of vaporizes out of here. So uh, you want to take a look at it. It's going to be on the Hangster's website, Daytona Beach, Florida. All right, let's see what we got here. We are a little Yanko style car. We have, what do we have? We have a fuel gauge that is functioning, an absolute crystal clear dashboard. It cannot get any clearer than this. The gauge cluster is just as new as it can possibly be. I don't think the horn works here, but you got a horn under there that you can blow. So the horn does function. Uh, it has a trio of gauges here, the water temperature, of course we just fired it up, it's going to be coming up. The amp gauge is working and of course the oil pressure is working, uh, showing about, uh, about 45, 48 pounds of oil pressure there I think. And the wipers are working. We are going to change those uh, blades, they're, they're, they don't fit the car at all. We got to put the original equipment style uh, argent colored uh, silver metal uh, blade arms on it. It'll, look 100% better. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got no radio, but there is a, a walk-off plate in the dashboard for it. There is uh, a radio in the glove box, however. And it's a high-end CD player. I have no idea how it works, but Devin will be able to tell you how to operate that guy. And air conditioning, air conditioning. Let's see if that works. Yep. Blown cold. Got blown cold out of the side vent and out of the vents underneath the dash. So we're good to go. We're good to go. All right, let's go for a ride. See how this guy runs. Okay, nice steering wheel alignment. What are we straighten out on the road here? I'll let go of it and see if it goes straight down the road. Okay, there we go. Down the road. Straight as an arrow. Let's see if it stops straight now. No hands on the wheel. Got a guy behind me that's really upset with me. I better go. Nice running car. Very tight steering. Very positive. When they did the steering box on this, they must have put a high resolution box on it because this there's. There's no way this is original type steering for a 1970 Nova. Very high resolution, something like you would feel in a Z28 or something. Very nice steering system. Man. Got the old Muncie, uh, original equipment Muncie Mystery Shifter. Uh, actually, this one actually feels pretty good. It hasn't jammed yet anyway. Nice running car. Give this guy a little squirt. Car runs nice, pulls nice. Moves down the road straight as can be, no shakes, wobbles, nothing. Really positive steering. I'm totally amazed at the way this car handles its mirrors. Uh, of course, it's got a sway bar in the front, stiffer springs, I'm sure, new shocks. The car is just very, very precise steering-wise. It's a nice car. It really runs, runs well, drives well, handles well, stops well. And a great color combination, too. You know, tuxedo black with white graphics on it. it doesn't get any better than that. It even has white graphics on the inside to match the outside. It's a nice car. It looks just like a Yanko and it acts like one, too. The turn signal's working. That's left turn. On the gas station here, that's right turn, functioning as it should. So both turn signals also work as they should. So we got everything working in this guy.
Alright, we're underneath our Yako style Nova. Really a neat vehicle. Nice tuxedo treatment. Uh, black with uh, white Yako uh, identifi identification uh, stripes on it. So this is the undercarriage. And this car is really, really a nice car. Uh, it does have a heavy duty sway bar in the front. Uh, new steering link, new tie rod ends both sides. Uh, all four of them actually. Uh, new uh, steering uh, link. New uh, uh, pitman arm, new idler arm, everything in the steering is new. New brakes in the front, new rotors, new calipers. The calipers are absolutely brand new yet. Still have the cadmium plating on them. New associated hardware with them. Uh, new shocks in the front. Uh, it does have a standard cast iron exhaust manifold. You can see there's no leaks on the engine. Uh, it's a big block Chevy. I don't know, it's 454 or something. But it's definitely a big block Chevy. Tab still on the uh, M21 Muncie transmission, four speed that's in it. Bell housing area has absolutely no uh, drips or anything whatsoever on it. The shield is missing, which is very common with a lot of the cars in the south here. They leave it off for ventilation, help to clear uh, the, to uh, cool the uh, clutch pressure plate or a converter in the case of an automatic car. So th it's not on. Uh, doesn't really need to be. Uh, even if it's a scent of a northern state, you're not going to use this thing in the slop and the slush anyway, so uh, the best thing to do is leave it off. Two and a half inch primary pipes coming off of the original equipment style cast iron exhaust manifolds for this guy. Um, new tranny mount, new motor mounts in the front, uh, conventional starter does not have a gear reduction starter in it, subframes in the front on this vehicle are absolutely undisrupted. You can see there's no scale whatsoever. They're crystal clear as can be paint-wise and, and as far as uh, uh, any uh, uh, rust or deterioration. Uh, fender panels on the inside. No one's made any uh, attempt to jack these things up and, and distort or bend the uh, inner fender panels on this vehicle. Rocker panels, uh, where the uh, floorboards transition onto them, Everything appears to be original. The pinch welds are still evident. Everything is nice as can possibly be. No leaks on the transmission, no leaks on the tail shaft, and no leaks on the speedometer gear either. How about that? Uh, everything appears to be correct on this car uh, and nice and clean. So it really looks like a really ankle underneath here. It really does. All the substructures on the uh, floor pans uh, still nice and undisrupted. No one's made any attempt to jack them up. Uh, on the floor pans through the years that I can see so far anyway. Uh, parking brake, uh, new cables, and uh, yeah, complete new parking brake assembly and functional. Uh, fuel line going toward the uh, rear, three-eighths of an inch. It is a replacement fuel line. It's not the original, but it's the original style with the wire wrapping. The uh, brake lines the same way. They've been replaced, but they're original style uh, brake lines on the vehicle. Torque thrust style mufflers. I don't think it's torque thrust written on them, but they are torque thrust style muffler. Uh, again, two and a half going in, and I'm going to call it two and a quarter going out. They dump down uh, about halfway between the uh, back bumper and the uh, rear part of the uh, wheel. Uh, floor pans in the back part, the same as they were in the front, uh, totally undisrupted. Still have a little bit of sound bender uh, uh, undercoating on them yet. New drive shaft, absolutely new drive shaft or recondition. New U joint in the back, new U joint in the front. Torque boxes on the front of the uh, uh, mono leaf springs in the back of this thing. They still have the uh, dampers uh, on them the same way that uh, GM put them in from the factory. Uh, again, the uh, torque box parts in the front were undisrupted. It's amazing there's no jack marks anywhere on this. I really don't see any little things going to be. Yeah, I guess there is one. It's a little tiny mark right here. You can't see it. There's more of a reflection than a, than a mark. But uh, I don't see anywhere the car's been really jacked up through the years. Must have spent a lot of time just driving it on and off a rack. The uh, subframes in the back are real nice and clean and uh, original looking as they transition up over the uh, rear differential. Discs in the front, drums in the back, all new hardware. It does have a staggered shock uh, rear suspension on it with new shocks in the back. Of course, that one's in the back. This was in the front of the uh, differential to help compensate for uh, the torque load on it. 
brand spanking new gas tank in it. There's uh, no question. It's a new tank, new straps, and new isolator uh, pads uh, between the tank and the straps. The trunk pan appears to be originally out of this car. I don't see any where it's been replaced. But it's hard to tell from under here, but it really looks like the original pan. Drop downs in the quarters are definitely still all original. They uh, have not been uh, disrupted in any way. Still have the original plugs in them. Uh, subframe that goes toward the rear and it, it has its uh, structural piece that goes across the back. There's no pulls or anything on it. Uh, new uh, hangers in the back for the springs. Well, I don't see anything at all in this vehicle. Stainless line coming out of this new tank and going on to the, um, so it has a new sending unit also, uh, going on to the uh, original equipment style um, fuel line that goes forward. Heavy duty, 10 bolt Chevy rear end in the vehicle. Uh, it's uh, really a nice vehicle underneath. I don't see anything that's deteriorated or rusted in any manner. Uh, nothing that's been uh, Compromised through the years, it still retains a lot of its original splatter undercoating from GM yet on the floor pans. Uh, you can see the exhaust is all new from front to back. Absolutely everything is new. Functional parking brake and look, no oil leaking. At least at this point, we're showing you that there's no oil leaks now. That doesn't mean six months from now or a year from now you won't find a drop on a garage because you probably will. It's just common in the muscle cars, you know, it's just the way they are. I, uh, geez, this is a great looking car underneath. Uh, I can't see anything that I can tell you a negative on underneath this car. This car is available at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. And uh, if you're in the market for a Yanko style car, this is your guy. It's a pretty nice looking car. you got to take a look at it. And it's a big block four speed too. Lots of fun.